and we're live. Welcome back to part eight of Free Roam Fridays. Let's get some headshot practice in. And then we can grab this deer on the way home. We need seven of them for our satchel. We'll bring the whole carcass back to Pearson as we need to donate five to camp again for the satchel. Good hole there, girl. And look at this pretty horse. Arthur is distracted. The gold Palomino Tennessee Walker, arguably the prettiest Tennessee Walker in the game. I do wish he had better stats or we had this coat on an Arabian or a Turkoman. Let's take the stagecoach. Meanwhile, back in Annisburg, I should show you this hatchet location. Howdy. Hello, mister. Here is the rusted double bit hatchet. And I thought we'd meet a cougar and we could brain him with the hatchet and then I got a better idea. Let's go visit the hermit and pick up a free shotgun and a treasure map. Change of plans, it's Free Roam Fridays. This is probably one of the most hostile NPCs in the game and his shotgun is a one-shot kill, so watch out. Here is the cabin, Manito Glade. And here is your location for the rusted double-bit hatchet. And that should have worked. Let's go with plan B. Plan B, obviously, is to shoot him. A lot. And I am so surprised that hatchet didn't take him out. 
I guess the lesson learned is never take a hatchet to a shotgun fight. Inside we have supplies and the torn treasure map part 1. I guess that means we're going to have to look for the torn treasure map part 2. <laughs> and the hermit had some books. He was a reader. There is some bourbon under the sink. However, take a look at this crate. Look at the corners. That's called a dovetail. Woodworking, like penmanship, is a dying art. But think of the level of detail here. It's under a sink. It serves no purpose other than to add another layer of realism and immersion to the game. Oh, and let's not forget to take a look at our new shotgun. It is the rare shotgun, double-barreled, and note the carving on the stock. Nice. Moving on. Arthur forgot to pick up the cash under the floorboards at the abandoned trading post last week, so let's do that now. And we might as well sleep here so we can have some better light for the video. Camping up north is dangerous. Won't say why. I'm sure Arthur will show you in some future video. And next we'll take the tracks across the map. However, this is cougar country, so be prepared. Thank <laughs> you. 
And here is the aforementioned scary tunnel. Yeah, there we go. And here is your map. We are almost directly north of the L in Grizzly's East. Yep. Look how dark it gets in here. Let's get the lantern out. I've never discovered anything in here, but I've also never explored it thoroughly. I'm not certain we have enough space on horseback to avoid a train on either side of the tracks. A wolf attack would be inconvenient, but very dramatic. And it would also be so great if there was someone in here or a side tunnel we could explore. However, we made it through unscathed, and in two years of basically daily playthroughs, I can assure you that nothing ever happens in that tunnel. But that doesn't stop me from being afraid every time Arthur goes through it. There's always a first time. And here is the map. We're very close to Bacchus Station. Good job! There's a cigarette card here. And here is Pauline Henderson, another gem of beauty. And the reason we took that tunnel to Bacchus Station is now we're near the legendary elk. Here is the location of the first clue. The elk trinket increases looted cash by 10%. It's basically the legendary buck trinket for cash. It comes in handy this early in the game where cash is a challenge. Ain't close. The legendary elk is easy to spot because he's all white, and look at the antlers on that big fella. Let's find out his opinion on explosive rounds. And this is probably the best legendary thumbnail we've made so far. Ow, ow. 
Let's process this elk and get him back to the trapper. And it's another lovely day to go for a horse ride in Red Dead Redemption 2. thought we might encounter Biscuit here at Moonstone Pond, but as long as we're here, let's explore that cabin. We can pick up another hatchet. This is the hewing hatchet. We can access this cabin from the roof via this fallen tree. So convenient. The lockbox has the homing tomahawk pamphlet. And there is a large jewelry bag here that we cannot pick up because we really need to get to the fence and sell off some items to create space and also upgrade our satchel so we can carry more stuff. We'll come back for it. This is also a good location for bats. And we can see the cabin owner here, however we can't loot him. He's taking a nap. A dirt nap. Moving on. Whoa! 
This video is sponsored by Batman Tonio, my second gaming channel where we play every other video game that isn't Red Dead Redemption 2. Like and subscribe for longer format deep dive gaming commentaries where I overanalyze and focus on the details. On the way to the trappers, we collected another deer. Just wait a second, girl. And also another boar. Arthur does love his pork chops. And we need an elk, but not this elk. And hunting in this area will scare the trapper and you will close the shop. Whoa. Okay, let's take a look at it. Boy, the things I can make with this. And the trapper is happy, which means Arthur is happy. And here, my friends, looks like a decent place to stop. I hope you enjoyed watching this commentary as much as I enjoyed making it. We'll drop off this deer pelt and head down to Rhodes to see the fence. However, we started this video with O'Driscoll headshot practice and we might as well end the video with it. You know how much I like symmetry. I'll see you in a week. I'm Super Antonio. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your views. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell for daily Red Dead Redemption 2 content, and we shall meet again. Further on down the trail. It's easier when they ain't shooting back.